Fitness influencer David Lade has 1.4 million followers on Instagram and a further 1 million on YouTube. He recently announced that he's been following a vegan diet for the last month, is enjoying it immensely and does not plan on changing. But what's more, in his most recent video he cites animal rights as being one of the main drivers behind his decision. Good man. In an effort to help him on his way, here's my critique of his vegan day of eating. Today I'm basically going to do a day in a life, have not really done one in a good amount of time and primarily showing you foods that I'm eating on my new diet, which is basically a vegan diet. I only drink water out of glass containers now. For the longest time, I'd avoid drinking tap water. Brilliant. By not drinking tap water, he's avoiding the chloride that would damage his gut microbiome. Of course, he'll be shifting over from being bacteroides, the harmful gut bacteria type dominant, over to the helpful Prevotella strains. So it's even more essential at this time. By not drinking out of plastic, he's avoiding the Xeno estrogens too, so it's 10 out of 10 from me. Being vegan, for me personally, I have just way, way more energy, and I require overall less stems, sometimes no stems at all. Can you hear that faint sobbing in the distance? Frank Tufano in Spurridge's Salty Tears. All right, so press workout smoothie. We have some blueberries, and then we have some strawberries. For the liquid base, we're gonna have some oat milk. So this is a vegan protein powder that I've been using right now. When I make the protein, I'll just literally put a scoop or two in water and I'll drink it. Then I'll assess how it makes me feel. Usually if it makes me like blow to my stomach, makes me feel lethargic, then it's probably a no-no. But this one, when I try it, I drink it and then I basically, I'm invigorated with more energy right after and I just feel really good. So that's how I know this one will legit. And it also, it kind of tastes like which is always a good sign. That means that they're not like trying too hard to make it taste good and putting other weird in there so this is what I'm using right now really enjoying it one scoops like 20 grams no added sugars um, yeah 20 grams of protein one scoop is so I'm just gonna toss about two scoops of this in there flaxseed hemp hearts moringa leaf powder lion's mane mushroom powder very potent especially if you combine it with other strains of mushrooms and a little yellow potassium pencil over here. Oh, I forgot one thing. Right here, we have some spirulina. Also super potent. I'm gonna try to scoop this with a fork. So berries are a great addition. Tons of post-workout antioxidants to quell the inflammation. I personally take two to 300 grams per day. If I ever add plant milk to smoothies, I tend to go for soya as it's far more protein rich. This would help David with his over-reliance on protein powders. Also, if David wanted to go more whole foods, he could add in white beans, which sounds weird, but actually works really well. Having tried dozens of protein powders personally, I've settled for Vivo Life, not only do they contain no sketchy ingredients, but they third party test for over 500 different contaminants. And what's more, they taste amazing, so it's win-win. Flaxseed, I tend to go a little lighter on. I shoot for one tablespoon of ground flaxseed per day for the anti-cancer lignans and omega-3s. There is, however, a small amount of cyanide in flax. It's the dose that makes the poison though. Even water is toxic in high enough doses. Likely, it would take over 50 grams of fine ground flax with the highest concentrations of cyanide to cause any issue. To be extra safe though, I prefer to emphasize ground chia seeds to get the majority of my omega-3. The hemp hearts are another great addition, brilliant nutrient profile, including some omega-6 and more omega-3s. I too am taking lion's mane currently, which boosts both immune and cognitive function. Bananas, believe it or not, are actually pretty low in potassium, coming in at 1,611 uh, on a list of the highest potassium containing foods, uh, according to the USDA. They actually came in behind Reese's Pieces, which is, of course, a junk food. I see so-called superfoods such as moringa and blue-green algae as not being essential. However, they can provide some great health benefits and obviously very nutritionally dense. The one thing I'd say is that personally, I'd swap out the spirulina for chlorine. Spirulina. spirulina is often contaminated with heavy metals and actually contains a neurotoxin. But all in all, this is a fantastic post-workout smoothie.
for anyone that doesn't follow me on Instagram, I made a post on Instagram the other day saying that I'm like 30 days in on a vegan diet. I'm like feeling super good and I plan on continuing. So I think in my last video, which was the 4th of July video, that's when I was basically maybe like one, two or three days into a quote unquote vegan diet and I was like feeling great. I'm definitely feeling really, really good. I'm about maybe a month in, maybe a month and some change and things that I could notice is way easier to get up in the morning, like way, way, way easier. Way more just energy, enthusiasm, vibrance throughout the day and normally I would need like stims to, like stims would be like necessary to work out or just kind of have energy throughout the day. And I could go to the gym with Sims, I can go to the gym to the gym without Sims, and if I go with Sims, then I don't have like an abrupt crash throughout the day. I just have just sustained energy throughout the entire day. And I've definitely lost weight. I maybe lost like five to ten pounds. And the reason for that is is it, I mean it's simply harder to get I mean, at least for me, it's harder to get more calories in. This is the one thing that new people can find quite tricky, particularly if they're eating healthfully because of all the water and fiber. One strategy is smoothies, which David is cleverly already implementing. I would say to eat well of legumes, tofu, tempeh, seitan, whole grains, tropical and dried fruits, nuts, seed, nut and seed butters, and avocado. What a huge list of positives David has cited though. And obviously vegan protein sources aren't as a complete or you know, optimal amino acid profile. So I'm supplementing with like essential amino acids, branch chain amino acids to try to, you know, optimize like the protein uptake. Absolutely no need for this. All whole plant foods contain all essential amino acids. Granted, they are in varying ratios, but for the sake of good health, we should be eating the range of whole plant foods daily in any case. As our bodies keep pools of free amino acids, this is the only thing that we need to concern ourselves with. I'll take iron here and there. I mean, I eat a good amount of spinach, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'll take a B12 here and there. I would invite David to track his foods via the chronometer app. If he's eating at least moderately healthy, he should smash iron. The B12 supplementation should be taken very seriously though. At his age, he should shoot for two and a half thousand micrograms per week. When not being exposed to strong sunlight, he should supplement around 2,000 IUs of vitamin D3 every day. And the other thing I'd pay particular attention to is iodine. If he's not eating seaweed regularly, then he should supplement with 150 micrograms minimum daily. Any yeah, overall intentions for trying this? I mean, one, I just like experimenting in general. And in the back of my mind, I've always known that, you know, there's probably something semi-optimal about a vegan diet. If it's whole foods plant-based, which I believe he's ultimately aiming for, then yeah, you'd be reducing your risk for 14 of the 15 leading causes of death. The other is accidental death, so just look where you're going. For more on this, check out nutritionfacts.org. And there's also something good about not killing animals unnecessarily, but I chose to just not investigate a little more in that direction. So then I basically reached the point where I was like, you know what, like, it's about, it's, it's time to essentially go vegan, like try veganism in a sense. And like I said, I feel very, very good and I don't really plan on stopping for like, at this moment on, I see myself essentially doing this for life. Good man. To my understanding, vegan diets have substantial anti-inflammatory effects and the lower back issue that I'm trying to heal right now, which is arthrosis in my facet joints, arthrosis stems from arthritis, arthritis stems from inflammation for a prolonged period of time. So just intuitively common sense, if I could do anything I can to reduce inflammation in my body, that's you know logically gonna accelerate the healing process. Yeah, so I suffered a herniated disc at age 21, which seriously impacted my quality of life. Switching over to a healthy vegan diet at age 36 has seen that improve drastically. That and the knee surgery, which wasn't seeming to heal until I made the switch. Another thing I forgot to mention is that if you guys are considering going vegan or just doing a drastic change in your diet in any capacity, I'd probably recommend making a slow and gradual transition because you don't want to shock your body too much and you, like your body's essentially accustomed like with this micro gut biome to eat like I mean to digest certain foods that you've been eating for a while because your body's used to it and if you just make just a radical abrupt change you could potentially cause issues complications spot on a bit of an oversimplification but if you think of your gut microbiome as a zoo historically you've been preferentially feeding the meat eaters suddenly throw in a load of plant matter and it's going to sit around and go bad in this case causing gut upset 
Another potential pitfall is that when we eat animals, we get pre-made animal nutrients such as carnitine and carnosine. Our genes may have turned off the ability of our bodies to make these nutrients from plant precursors, potentially seeing us feeling suboptimal for a short time. That being said, many do just fine with a fast switch. I'm an extremist. I love doing things in an extreme fashion. So literally one day after just many, many months or even years of eating like pounds of like red meat a day, I just decided that's it. I'm going to vegan. And then from that day, I haven't consumed basically a single animal product. So I did it in an extreme, just like radical overnight fashion. I don't necessarily recommend that you guys do the same thing. That's just how I did it. Just thought I'd put that out there. That dude has got a really good head on his shoulders. I'm impressed. All right, so the sweet potatoes are done and I'd normally be having my next meal right now that I would show you guys. But every now and then my mom does cook some miscellaneous food items such as you see right there, which is some pasta. So when she wasn't looking, I just stole a little bit. So I'm gonna eat this with a little snack. Although sweet potato is extremely healthy, if David is struggling with volume at the moment, I may switch this out for a time and lean more heavily on the grains, for instance, you know, whole grain pasta. So for my next meal, I just smashed up some avocados right there. And basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add some rice in this rice cooker. You see that's white rice. Uh, I've mainly been eating brown rice this whole time. Maybe had white rice here and there. The reason I'm eating white rice right now is I feel like I've been eating so much brown rice lately, which has a lot more fiber than white rice. And even though fiber is good and my end result diet is gonna have a lot of fiber, my stomach still needs to kind of adjust and I've been feeling a little stressed out in the gut region from just such an excess of fiber. So I'm just toning it back a little bit and making white rice. So this meal is basically gonna be avocado, with white rice and some uh, black beans, which I'll show you in a second. I'm probably just gonna dice up some spinach and kale, throw it in there, salt the thing, and that's gonna be my meal. I'm gonna use my hand as a drainer. They're organic, because everything I buy, I make sure that it is organic, as top-notch quality as I could possibly get. So, a good amount of healthy fats and vitamin E is coming from the avocado. David recognizes that it would be more healthy to stick to the fiber and B vitamin rich brown rice. However, in the interim, he's swapping some in for white rice, which I applaud him for. Black beans, of course, are excellent. I would recommend for him to rinse more thoroughly, removing more of the hemicellulose and, you know, the potential for more gas. And greens wise, although spinach does have a lot of great nutrients, it's not without its drawbacks. It, along with chard and beet greens, contains high amounts of oxalates, which can cause harm in the body in high enough doses. I'd recommend to have no more than one servant of either of these in a day. Cooking, however, does reduce oxalate load. All right, so next meal is ready. I don't bother showing it because it's pretty basic. I got one of the extra large sweet potatoes smashed up, maybe like a cup of brown rice and another box of beans. And I'm also getting sick of these beans because you feel alternate between like beans and lentils, but I'm out of lentils at the moment. But yeah, I'm gonna eat that, I'm gonna salt it up. And of course, another scoop of this. Again, another solid meal. He could switch out the black beans for any other of the myriad of different beans, or he could use some well-seasoned tempeh, seitan, tofu, or even textured vegetable protein. I would add some more overt fats in, perhaps I'd pick nuts as he's not had any yet today. Personally, I like to add a little bit of fruit in each meal, but that's just me. As I eat that, me and Mr. Garrison right here <laughs> are gonna play, um Little one, two, heads up, until one of us is completely busted and broke. This is a, this is a vegan natty shuffle. Oh yeah, is it? Mm-hmm. Sure. I think you added a little bit of meat in there on accident. Uh, I didn't actually. Garrison is the one with the meat. And because of that, he is going to burn in hell. And by hell, I mean this green table and he will lose all his chips. Probably right the first time. <laughs> So, wrapping up the night, we basically have some buckwheat and spinach. Normally, I wouldn't eat buckwheat, not that I have anything against buckwheat at all. I just haven't gone through the trouble of, like, cooking it and stuff. This is just another miscellaneous item that my mom, once in a blue moon, occasionally cooks and leaves in the kitchen, so I definitely hijacked some of that. Threw some, like, spinach and kale in there, mixed it together with some salt, 
that meal is so low calorie. I'm probably like, it's inverted. Like I'm gonna lose weight eating that, but hey, that's the vegan lifestyle. Over there, we have some almond butter on some sourdough bread. And then we have another scoop of that protein in there. So an easy fix for the calorie issue would be to lean more heavily on the breads and nut butters. Almond butter is a fantastic choice, by the way, and the one that I choose more often than not. It's very high in vitamin E, which some vegans can struggle with if they don't take a care. As David has already had a serving of spinach today, personally, I'd bin that in favor of more kale. Kale is far more nutritionally dense anyway and contains a lot of a compound called sulforaphane, which is hugely cancer preventative. All in all, I think David is doing fantastic. He seems to be extremely cleared up and I foresee him doing really, really well. Why not give him a follow and offer him some words of encouragement? And now click this.